when the Japs raided Darwin, they, uh, we had a, an aerial reconnaissance that used to go along the coast and uh, they reported that there was Japanese at, uh, uh, what was the name of the place? Um, anyway, they said they saw Japanese on, on the beach and uh, so they suggested that we go up there and uh, uh, see what Japanese were there and collect all the Aboriginals from around there because at that time they were expecting the Japs to invade the coast there and uh, so four of us went up, four, four policemen mounted on uh, horses in the wet season uh, equipped with 44 calibre rifles, one each and about 50 rounds of ammunition to fight the Japanese army <laughs> what had happened, there had been a, a boat had been, uh, a Japanese boat had been sunk and a lot of Japanese clothing had been washed up and uh, the blacks had got it, and especially the caps, you know, they were wearing those and, and our surveillance aircraft, they'd uh, seen these and thought they were Japanese and uh, so uh, we, we didn't have to defeat the Japanese army, <laughs> we were a bit fortunate in that, but uh, uh, our other job was to to collect all the uh, all the Aboriginals there, and they were pretty wild in those days. They weren't uh, driving about in motor cars or anything. So, so the track and I went down there, and we we waited about oh, three or four hundred yards away until daylight came, and then we raided the camp just before daylight, and all the blacks lying on a sandy area, and. Uh, I got, I think it was about 25 I got on, handcuffed them while they were still asleep and the others, uh, well one, when one woke up they let out a roar and they went for the lick of their lives and they, they all, they had their spears, their shovel nose spears all standing up and uh, as they raced past and each one of them grabbed one and they went bush and uh, as I said before they were, they were pretty wild blacks but anyway I got my chaps, and, and they took my tracker with them. And whether they took him or he went, I don't know, but he disappeared. Well, I got my 20 odd uh, that I had and headed back towards the camp where the other policemen were. And the, the, the blacks that had got away, they started throwing their spears at us, but because of the high grass, the spears wouldn't come down. And, uh, Luckily for us, they, but uh, they didn't know exactly where I, where we were. But the, the ones that that I was shepherding up along this track, they were calling out to the other blacks, you know, and they were calling back to one. They, they got a bit of an idea where we were. I saw a few spears go over the top. Uh, but uh, I was thankful to get back to the camp, okay, and <laughs> with these, and uh, we spent a couple of nights in that camp. But they. The, the blacks that had got away, they uh, uh, they tried to come in and, and free the others, but we just fired a shot in the air and they'd nick off. And so we got them all back to Darwin, okay. And uh, the reason, the real reason for getting them was that uh, we knew that if there was an invasion, which was in expected, that the Japanese would use these blacks uh, t to guide them about and help them. And if the blacks didn't do that, well, they'd just lop their heads off. So uh, we, we uh, two things in mind was to save the blacks from getting knocked off by the Japs if they landed, if and when they landed, uh, and to uh, see that they didn't help any Japs. Anyway, we got them back, and uh, uh, some of them were uh, some of them were sick. Some of them had TB, and they were we we set up a. Uh, hospital in, in Tennant Creek and sent them down there for treatment and a couple had leprosy, they were looked after to set up a leprosarium thing and uh, I suppose the others wandered back to, to uh, Gun Point where we got them from. But